Prevention is better than cure. You all know that. Yet, do we walk our talk? A rhetorical question. Especially when it comes to natural disasters. Natural disasters have doubled over the past decade, and so has the number of victims. So what to do about it? Today, I'm here to share with you how we can turn one euro into seven euro. I'm not a magician, <laughs> and I'm not even very good at mathematics, but I'm simply here as a person who has seen the impact of far too many disasters in the many years that I worked with and for the Red Cross and Red Crescent movement. So back to the story. Natural hazards occur, but how to prevent them to become full-scale humanitarian disasters? Although we can predict them much better nowadays, not nearly enough action has been taken to address the root causes or consequences. Governments and aid organizations usually act after a disaster has taken place. We react instead of proact. The result? A host of problems. Like refugee flows, families being split up, immense material damage, epidemics, and in, 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 an increase of poverty. This is not a stand-alone problem. We see the need to look at it from a broader perspective, to understand the root causes of risk in connection with the natural environment. Heavy rainfall, rainstorms, ever more erratic, floods, mud flows because of deforestation, increasing drought, when the capacity to retain the soil is lost, or pastures left barren by overgrazing. And you know, this usually hits the poorest people in the poorest countries, people who have contributed least to these disasters. Natural calamities increase, but the funds to cope with them do not increase. So for us in the Red Cross, this led us to focus on disaster risk reduction. Whereas traditionally, we were relief-oriented. Of course, emergency relief is needed. Emergency relief remains needed. But emergency relief is not enough. We need to be more proactive. And you'll say that's okay, and it's logical and rational, and it's... But it hardly happens. Prevention works, but it's not sexy. Media attention after a disaster has taken place usually works much better for fundraising. Picture all this misery that you see. It triggers you immediately into action. But imagine all this money spent on reconstruction and development is wasted when disasters recur and destroy everything again and again. So how can we make a difference? With a new holistic approach. So, starting with simple preventive means and show how they work and that they work. It's essential to make smart contingency plans, such as early warning, simple, <laughs> uh, evacuation plans, building check dams and bridges, as well as disaster-proof 
uh, houses and schools, peer education in primary health and in first aid, and water safety, um, storage plans, and adaptation of the ecosystems. All these measures together, by involving the population at risk, it's crucial to involve the population at risk, in cooperation, of course, with the other stakeholders up and down the chain, to create solutions together to be better prepared when disaster strikes. I'll give you an example. Bangladesh. I've been to Bangladesh, and I've seen with my own eyes that this holistic approach truly works. It has made a tremendous difference in saving lives and livelihoods. It boosts people's resilience and gives them a feeling of, of ownership. It makes them proud on what they do, and it makes me proud to be part of this. It shows disaster risk reduction works. With this new approach, we make maximum use of our aid donations. By investing one euro in prevention, we save seven euro in emergency relief. Until now, my Red Cross Fund is the only disaster risk reduction fund worldwide, according to the UN. I sincerely hope that our Red Cross initiative will be followed in order to change mindsets so that we can make a real difference. Thank you. All right.